As we saw today, um, interference not only occurs with sound and with uh, waterways, but also occurs with light. We can show that that is the case by using uh, a laser, which puts out some monochromatic light, in other words, light of a single frequency, um, passing that through a diffraction grating, which is basically something that can be used to cause interference of light, and uh, then displaying the results on a screen. So our diffraction grating um, is basically uh, a small screen with thousands of little lines etched on it. And as light passes through those lines, it goes off in different directions. So it goes off at different angles. And because the, the various different rays of light have different distances to travel, then they become in phase with each other or out phase with each other. And that's why we see uh, a display of uh, constructive interference and destructive interference at various points on the screen. So we took some measurements of this um, today. Those measurements we're going to use uh, later on to uh, calculate what the wavelength of laser light is. So the grating had 2,000 lines per centimetre, so that's 2,000 little gaps every, every centimetre. Uh, we measured the distance to the screen and the distance between uh, the, the central maxima, the first area of constructive interference, um, and uh, the one next to it. And we found that that was 0.13 metres. We used those uh, values just from a triangle. If we look at the previous page, um, then we just used opposite over adjacent side to calculate what tan of the angle was and found that it was 2.9 degrees. We're going to use that 2.9 degrees later to figure out what the wavelength of light is once we've proved the diffraction grating formula. Today we also looked at um, uh, what happens to white light when you pass it through a diffraction grating. Now, white light goes through the diffraction grating and basically splits into uh, different uh, maxima and minima. So we've got bright areas and we've got dark areas, again, displaying the interferences taking place for the same reason as with the laser, that the light is heading off at different angles, so traveling different distances, waves becoming in or out of phase with each other. In the middle, we had um, a central fringe, a central maxima, which was completely white, so the white light is passing straight through the middle of, of this uh, diffraction grating. And then either side of that, we had two or three um, spectra, so running from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and through to violet. So the diffraction grating produces um, a visible spectrum by diffracting the different wavelengths of white light uh, through different angles. And we'll explain that later once we look at the diffraction grating formula. So we see differences between that and the, the prism which uses diffraction. In the prism, violet deviates the most. We've, we've seen that because you know violet has a greater refractive index than, uh, than red light does. We've only got one order or one spectrum order. is just another word for a spectrum of light. Um, so just one run from red through to violet. In the diffraction grating, however, we've got red deviating the most. So we see red being the, the red light being bent far more than the other types of light. And we also see um, that there are several orders on here rather than just one, and we've got a central white fringe. So it's really just looking at the diffraction grating. A diffraction grating can be used to cause interference. That interference happens because we've got the light being split up, going through different little spaces in the diffraction grating. Um, and as we'll see, that creates something that's called a path difference. In other words, one ray of light has to travel further than the other, so that's why they end up in phase or out of phase with each other.